Unit 4, Research Methods. Section 2, Ethical and Legal Issues in Research. Okay, so this quick screen pass is just going to look at ethics. Um, it's part of the Ethical and Legal Issues section, and it's very, very important because you need to be able to uh, carry out ethical uh, work before you're actually allowed to start your research. It links directly to the assessment because, uh, and, and this screencast is particularly looking at just P4, just describing the ethical issues. Okay, so the learning outcome for this screencast is, is really just about understanding the basics of the ethical issues in research. Okay, so with research, research is all about discovery. It's all about pushing the boundaries and finding out new things. Um, but in order to do that uh, and to be accepted, our research must also be ethical. So as well as discovering new things, we must make sure that we're not uh, doing anything that we shouldn't do and therefore are being ethical. So this screencast is going to really look at what ethical means and how we can make sure that our research will be accepted as ethical uh, once we've done it. So in terms of what ethics means, ethics can be defined as a set of moral principles. Uh, and this is really about what's considered right and wrong. So in society we have a, a set of moral principles, so sort of unwritten laws if you like, about what we consider to be acceptable and what we don't. Now some of those moral principles have been turned into law. So for example, it, 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 most people would consider it morally wrong for someone to punch someone else in the street. Um, and there's also a law to prevent that as well. And then there are other options where maybe um, we consider things to be morally wrong, but maybe there may not be a law against it. And that's obviously where people's morals are different, uh, and everyone has their own opinion, which is why this can be sometimes quite tricky. So to be ethical, we need to make sure we stick by our morals or our principles. And the problem, obviously, with research ethics, as I've just said, is that everyone has their own different ideas. So with research ethics, it's about establishing what do we consider to be a, a behaviour or set of procedures that we can follow and be ethical. Now to help us out, the World Medical Association in 1975 got together and created something called the Helsinki Declaration. And this is a standardised worldwide list of moral principles or rules which researchers must follow when they conduct research. And this obviously is, is vital to making it very clear to people what is considered acceptable in research. So let's start with the first one. The first one is about consent. Um, it doesn't matter what research project you're doing, you must have the full permission or consent of an individual before taking part in that research. Um, there's no options here. It must be that someone has agreed to take part. You cannot force people into doing your own research um, and they must, must, must give permission. Now what's also very important is that you cannot sign anyone into a contract. Um, they must have the power of choice. They must be able to drop out of the research at any time if they so wish. And the last one is children and youths. Um, obviously with someone that's under the age of 18 they would need parental consent on their behalf. The last point obviously is that consent should be informed. Now informed consent is all to do with this idea that um, a subject, as well as agreeing to take part, must be fully aware of the risks, the demands and the benefits before they take part. So they must be fully aware of everything that's going on. So they must be informed. So what we can't do is dupe people into taking part in our study by not telling them all the nasty stuff we're going to do to them. We must be very clear from the start about that. Some other issues that come with this, obviously a subject must be in the appropriate mental and physical condition to actually give their consent um, and it must be based on them understanding it. So again, there's no point producing a lovely 20 page booklet about everything that's going to happen in the study if the subject doesn't read it. We must be uh, sure that the subject has read it and understood it. And this obviously allows or brings up a lot of issues regarding distinction here about where this can go wrong. So normally what we do is we have a very detailed consent form and this is where we outline all of the procedures and problems that might come in. We, we make a declaration which is usually a, a small body of text where the um, subject uh, understands the risks and, and they agree to that. They understand they have the right to withdraw at any time. And we also make sure that this consent is written so that we have evidence that they did agree to take part in the study.